final exam for this course <laughs> it will be multiple choice, but it will also be fill in the blank and short answer. So you're going to have to take and read a database description and write an entity relationship diagram. Then you're going to have to take the diagram, translate it into a bunch of tables, and then write some queries that run up to it. You're also going to be given a small portion of multiple choice questions. So this particular exercise is going to be really fun and really interesting for us to put together. So I want to like, I want to see if you guys can actually get the right answer. I want to see why the right answer is the right and why the wrong answer is the wrong, kind of thing. So it's not a bad exercise to kind of like test your, test your proficiency at this point. So in the first one, and uh, keep in mind there might be a, where it says choose two you got to read the questions correctly. There might be two of them in there. So you want to get a receipt for which two of them are in there. Which two operators cannot be used in an outer joint condition? Can't be used in an outer joint condition. So you have to think to yourself, well, what's an outer joint? What's a joint? Actually, just take the word outer. You don't have to worry about that. A join is when you're usually going to use multiple tables if you remember the SQL stuff we did. So you have the information. Uh, B. B, yeah, and D. Yeah. A. A you can do a join with. So take the word outer because everything is an outer join. Can you join a table with and in a syntax? So and and well, okay, for example, and, and, uh, oh, cannot, I'm sorry, I got the wrong way. I'm doing it the opposite. Cannot, what was your question, what was your answer again? A and B. B is one of them. You can't use in, but you can use the equality. Because if you said that, for example, um, select star from this table and that table where first name from here equals first name from there. And then you've got a join on an equal. So take the word out. Everything by default is outer, by the way. Ah, okay, so maybe that's the terminology. So if you take the word outer out of it and just say join, the join is to combine two tables together abstractly so that you can query them both together. So you get concatenation essentially between rows and strings and names and things together. Outer takes the most biggest one, the longest. Let's say, for example, the tables don't have the equal number of columns or equal number of rows. Table A has 25 rows. Table B has 50 rows. Outer takes the bigger and combines it with the smaller and leaves them unmatching each one. Inner takes the small one and match only the matches with the small one, the really small one. So you don't get all the matches with an inner. With the outer, you get everything. So union would be all of them, yeah. So yeah, outer is union. Plus, huh? It is. It is. Works the same. So if I were to say equal, I would get the outer if all the ones from table A were equal to the ones from table B. So by default, you get the outer on the equality. Um, so A works, but B, B and D are the answers, by the way. B is, uh, B is in and D is or. So you can take this one and this one joined together. You can take this one where this one is equal to this one joined together. But if you do the in, you're looking for one item in a set. So, and plus the syntax wouldn't work for in either because in is usually used with a subquery and another subquery. So you usually have two subqueries when you're separating them. And then the or is the exact opposite of that. This one or that one. So you're not going to get an outer join with an or because you're going to have one set or the other set, but you're not going to get both of those sets. So it was kind of a trick question. All the questions are sort of like this, but uh, anyway, the answer to that one is B and D can't be used. B is the N and D is the order. So I'm going to mark it like this. So 
So I'll put the answers on here. Uh, the answer would be B and B. There we go. Everybody see that? Ish. Maybe. Maybe not. Huh? Oh, make a different color. That's the thing. Actually, that's a good point. That's a good point. Let's make a different color. Blue. Oh, that, wait a minute. That's outer blue I meant. I want to do that. Honking blue. Oops. I get that none. Oh, well, this is just messed up. <laughs> uh, this is just really messed up. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay. Hey, that worked. <laughs> Next. You query. I think you should say your query. Oh, no. You query the database with this command. Select ID number, quantity minus 100 divided by 0.15 minus 35 times 20 from inventory. Your expression is evaluated first. Which, excuse me, which expression is evaluated first? A, B, C, or D? So there's an order of evaluation, but not necessarily a number of them that you would select. C. D. Divided by a point. Actually, C would work. D, C, or D would work in this case because C is really a subset for D. Because if you look over here, you have to resolve this first on the select. So this section here, which is not really the whole thing, this is only a part of it. But the correct answer is D. Yeah. Do we see why? No. Okay. <laughs> This is uh, much harder than we expected here. Okay, so um, in order to do the, uh, so it's not, quantity minus 100 would be done last. And uh, this part here would be done probably around second to last. But if you were doing it from left to right, multiplication then division, unless you put brackets around here, let's, let's, let's correct this here. That one would go first. And then you, that number would be minus 35. Well, no, actually, you do this. Sec this would be second, and this would be third. If you take uh, order of precedence, you're going to do it every. Well, this is actually technically the brackets. Don't worry about this one. It's a trick question. They're all trick questions. So <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. They're not all trick questions. They're some kind of tricky though. And the correct answer is D, meaning that this one would actually happen first. Multiplication and division starting left to right first. It's just trying to get you on order of precedence. Let's go back to algebra. Addition, subtraction is done last. Ah, let's skip that one. That, that brings back math memories. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, so let's see. Number three. Number three. Operator John needs to search for text data in a column, but he only remembers part of the string. Which of the following SQL operations allows the use of wildcard comparisons? Between, in, like, or exists? How many people think it's like? Yeah, you want to be right. <laughs> so. This is an easy one. This is an easy one. So the correct answer is like. This like this. That like that. So the wildcard operator we know is the underscore. We know is the um, percent sign. So this question wasn't really asking what the operators were, but we could say something is like um, any number of characters plus uh, 555 dash 
two, one, two. Oops, these are supposed to be underscores. So my underscore character doesn't like it. I'll do it like this. There we go. So we could say the like pattern. So the like is the output. <laughs> How did you make it up to the Apple Store, by the way? <laughs> did they fix it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, number four. Uh, number four has a uh, oh, number four's got a lot of options on it. It's a big question. Uh, given the following data in the imp table, uh, employee name or imp table might be employee table. And, uh, employee name and employee salary. We got employee name and salary. What would the following select statement produce? Choose one. Select E name from EMP where salary is between 3000 and 5000 So you're looking for the results. Let's do it this way. So it all fits on one page. So if we're going to select the E name, we're going to get the name. All of these have the name in it. Oh, no, we got an error. Let's see. I don't think it's going to do that one. Let's see. From EMP where the salary is between 3000 and 5000 like 10,000. Uh, so it's too high. So if we go through it and say, well, three, ping might show up. And uh, let's see. Oh, ping's not going to show up. Does ping show up? Ping would show up. 5,000. Between? Between does, it would be, ah, okay, so, any, okay, so C, C and D are wrong, because the query is correct, so we can wipe out those two options. So the big question would be, who's Eileen? She's 490, that, this is definitely between 3,000 and 5,000, ping is equal to 5,000, that's too low, that's equal to 3,000, that's too low, that's too high. Correct answer, oops, I'm sorry. Highlighted the wrong one. The correct answer is actually A. A is a is the correct answer on that one because it's the only one that really falls in the range. Alright. I guess I don't have to bold it, I can just leave it like that. Well, let's see, look at number five. Which of the following statements contains an error? You guys have it ready? Uh, you think it's C? Let's see. Well, C looks pretty good. Select employee from M. D. Okay, let's just go through the first one. Select star from M where M is equal to. That looks pretty good. The number. And then uh, M ID. Well, we don't have the tables for this, so we're going to assume that the M ID is a number. Um. B, let's see, select EMP from employee ID where EMP ID is equal to 499 and isn't. Select EMP ID from EMP where EMP ID. That looks pretty good too. Then uh, C, D, so some people are saying this one here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that is the correct answer. So select this from this, select this from this, select star from this, select EMPID, where EMPID is equal to this, and it's a correct query except for there's no from. We don't know where we're selecting it from. So that one is actually an error. Or none of the statements above contain an error. Oh, they do. This one's missing the from. So that's kind of an obvious one. Uh, so let's see, number six. Let's see. Six to appear on the same page. Ooh, six has got a lot. Um, which of the following queries would show the salaries of all employees, not the boss, who have the same name as the boss? The only employee without a manager. Manager. Hmm. So let's see. Is this one tricky? This one is 
semi tricky, but it's not too bad. Uh, so let's see. Salaries of all employees, not the boss, who have the same name as the boss. So select Sal. So if we go to this one, I'm going to say select Sal from Amp, where employee name, same as, what have you ever seen the same as before? I've never seen the same as before either. <laughs> so this is really bad syntax, actually. <laughs> uh, so let's see, what's the number B look like? Like, we just saw that from the previous question. Uh, so what do we got here? Select Sal from employee where employee name is like, that works. And like is done with a subquery, it can be. So select e name from employee where the manager is equal to null. And the manager is not null, not empty. Eh. Or select sal from employee where manager doesn't equal null and employee name is equal to select employee name from employee where manager is equal to all of the above, well, definitely not all of the above because the first one's wrong. None of the above. Mm. Maybe not. This was the one here, though. But you know what? This one here, would this one work? Um, select cell from employee where employee manager doesn't equal null. Name is equal to select name from employee where manager is equal to null. Well, this is not going to, this equal is going to fail. Because you're going to get more out of there than just null. It has to be one. So this query would work if this only returned one entry. Because of these, the equals is going to throw it off. But the like is a little bit safer to do. The like isn't going to, equality only gives you back one. So if x is equal to 5, you can't go x is equal to 5 for e. You can only have one on each object. Uh, but the like's going to give you everything. It's kind of tricky. But uh, b would have worked for that one. Is this too hard? <laughs> uh, we'll only do about half of this, and then we'll do something else, and we'll come back and do the other half later. <laughs> okay. You wish to join the data from two tables, okay? A department and employee into one result set and display that set in your session, in your window. Tables department and employee have a common column called department number in both tables. So we're probably going to do equality on those department numbers. Which of the following choices correctly displays the where clause you would use if you wanted to see the data in the table department where the value is equal to 80 in the column department number, even though there's no corresponding data value. And this is a trick question. I'm going to have to give you the answer to this one because I didn't cover this part. The outer join in, uh, the outer join in most languages is a principle. So you don't have to answer this question. I'm going to give you the answer. The answer to this question is B. B. This is the correct answer to the question. And let me tell you why in a few minutes here. So the plus is going to give us the outer join. So we have an outer join, an outer join, and an outer join. And we have another outer join. Well, we have two outer joins. That's not going to work. The plus goes at the end. The plus goes at the end of the statement. So here's the problem with this one. It's at the beginning, or it's actually in the middle. Department plus number and then we have equals department number. So it's really the same query here, except for we pulled it out of this location. We stuck it at the very end of the query. So the syntax does look like this. That's the correct syntax. It just took two brackets and plus it, but it gives you the outer join. So all the queries are correct except for that place exception. Well, actually, they look like the same queries, actually. This one has it twice. This one has it once at the end. This one has it once in the middle. And then this one here doesn't have it at all. <laughs> Same query, but it just says uh, our department number is equal to 80. Well, it's not going to give you an outer join. So you're not going to be asked this on the final either, but the outer join is up. If you see a plus symbol, you're looking at an outer join. That's right. Memory. So those people who are not here today are going to look at that. 
memory. Which of the following are true? I'm using table aliases. So this would be like another name for the table, but not the table. So choose three. Well, table aliases can be up to 30 characters in length. They actually can. I think that's just true. And I'm giving you the answer because I don't really think I covered the length of the alias. It can't be longer and it can't contain spaces. So it could be up to about 30 characters, no spaces. And it is case sensitive. Let's see what the other questions here say. The table alias should be as long as possible for readability. No, you want to make it short. So that one's not really good. Uh, so let's see, A is one of them. C, if a table alias is used for a particular table name in the from clause, then that table alias should be substituted for the table name throughout the select statement. So if I want beers B1, in my select I can go B1.name, comma, B1.something else. So number C is correct, actually. Number C works. Now let's take a look at D. There must be less than 30 characters in length. Up to 30, less than 30. There must be less than oh, it doesn't have to be. There can be thirty. So, but that's kind of tricky. There doesn't must well. There must be less than thirty. So I guess that is true. It's contradictory. If the table alias can be up to thirty characters in length, and then there, they, the, the table alias can be less than thirty characters in length. Well, technically it can be less. It doesn't must. They must be less. Let's change this one and make it true. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say. They, they can be less than 30 characters in length. Otherwise, it's false. It's up to 30. So is it 30? It can be 30, or it could be less than 30. So it's a trivia question. I'm not really going to mess, mess around with that one. But if, if that were the case, then it would actually be true. And uh, a table alias is valid for the entire session? No. It only works in the query that you created it. Do you guys know what a table alias is, right? Beers, B1, or beers, B2. B1 and B2 are aliases for table alias. All right. Stop me if you guys have questions. This is, this is our review. I'm reviewing, believe it or not. Uh, SQL class. Number nine, how many join conditions are required to join n tables? Any number of join conditions, at least, okay, I think we can knock out the bad ones here. Uh, N minus 1 is your answer, which this is B. How are you going to join at least 3? Why would you have to join at least 3? It's really 2. 2 minus 1 is one other one. So if N was 2, how many join conditions are required to join 2 tables? Put two in here. Two. Why would you have to have two join conditions? What's a join condition? Where this name is equal to this name. That's one join condition. So you can go where first name, join this table for students on this table for classes. Where first name, or where student ID on this table is equal to student ID on that table. That would be one join condition. And where classes from this table is equal to classes from that table over there. N minus one. It's one. One join is necessary. Two. If it's three tables, then you have two joins because you have to go from three tables. You have to go one table to join this one and this one, and then one to this one and this one. Two join conditions. So it's N minus one. Tricky question. Most people don't like these multiple choice ones. <laughs> Number 10, let's see, it, it does get better. <laughs> what types of queries typically involve self-joins? A self-join is when we go beers B1, we go beers B2. So we're joining one and we go where B1.name is equal to 
do you see that one on the shelf? Uh, so let's see, then that would be, let's see if we can get the answer to this one. Queries where rows and tables refer to other rows in the same table. That sounds pretty good. Queries where the join columns can be normal. Mm, you can't join on normal. Queries involving multiple tables with foreign keys. Uh, hello, they all have foreign keys. Um, and why would you want to do a self-join on that? Foreign key to a foreign key. You'd probably do a primary key if you're going to do a self-join on the same table. Or introspective queries. I don't know what introspective means, actually. It's not a word <laughs> used in queries. So the correct answer to this one is actually number A. Queries where rows in the table refer to other rows in the same table. Because you're querying the table onto the table. So that's the nature of the self-join. You're joining the table onto the table to verify each other. You're trying to find matching sets in the same table. Number 11. Number 11. Long question. Some space in here so we can see 11 on the same page. Okay, so we can see 11 here, yeah. In an application, you're searching for specific employee information in the employee table corresponding to an invoice number you have. The invoice table contains employee ID, the primary key for employee. Which of the following operations is appropriate? for obtaining data from the employee using the invoice number. Okay, so let's go through the middle here. Uh, we want the employee data using the employee number. So select star from employee where the employee ID is equal to this number. Hmm. Well, that's okay, but let's look at it now. What do we want? We want the invoice table containing the employee ID. Uh, probably should be searching the invoice table then, instead of the employee table. Uh, let's see. No, here's the invoice number and the employee number. So we're going to join the two tables together. So this is actually the correct one. We need to involve the invoice table. This one just has the employee uh, table from employee. This one just has the employee table, but it's doing a subquery. So select star from employee where employee ID is equal to select invoice number from invoice. This query is going to cause a problem because it's going to come back with more than one answer. So the equality is not required. That query is just going to fail. Number two is just going to fail. Number one would work, but you're not joining the invoice table. So number three, select star from employee where employee ID is equal to select employee number from invoice where employee and where invoice number is equal to this. That's going to come back with one. This one is actually going to work. And then looking at number D, select E dot employee I dot invoice number from employee comma invoice where employee number one is equal to invoice number and number D would number D work mm, you're gonna get both of them together number D would work but you're not gonna get, you're gonna get doubles duplicates in there because you're gonna get it from both because you're gonna select the employee number and the invoice number you're gonna get both of them together so the select is uh, the select is different because you're going to get the invoice number there as well. So number D is actually a valid query. It just doesn't describe, it doesn't do what the description does when you get it. Lucky number 12. All right, let's see if we can get number 12. Uh, uh oh, number 12 says Oracle in it, so let's see. Uh, you're developing advanced queries for an Oracle database. Where the following three clauses makes use of an Oracle's ability to logically test a value against a set of results returned without explicitly knowing what the set is before executing the query. Ugh. 
I take the word oracle out of there. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing in any database. It just means different things. So we're looking for the clause. What are we looking for? What is the set? Or the set. So we have where column A is equal to 5. Mm, column A is in. So equal. this would actually work, but it's not a set. It's a single value. Column A is in this group. It's between this group. Or it's in, uh, this looks like a better one. So the correct answer to this one is going to be B. And why is it correct? It is correct because we have a select number from tablet numbers. I know it's too hard. <laughs> the, bit, the final is not this hard, by the way. This is meant to be challenging. If you could do this, you're going to ace any database exam anywhere. <laughs> and some of you actually are probably guessing it correctly. Uh, but this is the one here because you're going to get it valid numbers in here rather than assuming that they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is actually, from a syntax perspective, not going to work. Because you need to run a, if you're running an in, you got, there's no such thing as between, by the way. This is illegal. No, it, no between. This is not a set. It's a single item. So A is wrong. And C is wrong for syntax. B is wrong because you can't, you can't put a group of numbers right here, but you can put a subquery in here. So D is the same as B, except for there's a subquery in the user. So the subquery is going to be the select number from tablet numbers. Number 13. Let's see. Let's just do a couple more, then we'll move on to something else. <laughs> so number 13. Uh, let's see. What is the effect of an order by clause inside a nested subquery? Nesting a subquery. Can you put an order by clause in there? No. You can put a group by clause in there, but you can't put an order by clause in there. Order by gives us a whole query of results, and you're ordering it by the entire query output. It's a result set output formatting. So inside a nested subquery, it's going to generate an error, or it's not going to work. Because uh, it's not really possible. So it does, this is the correct answer. It's not a legal operation. You can group by in the very moment, but you don't really need to to group by in a subquery. What do I mean by subquery? Like right in here, you couldn't order by something because you're not going to get any results. It's a subquery that's going to be used for substitution. So the group would work, but the order by is not going to work. So maybe that's a trick question because you don't know that order by doesn't work. We'll leave that one alone. Does it cause matching rows in the outer query to be displayed in that order? No. <laughs> that's what the problem is. It really should be at the outer query. So remember if you're doing a having or you're doing a group by or an order by, those are outer queries. You can use that on the, on the big one. Okay, so it generates an error. Uh, let's, do, let's do half of them. I think how many do we have left? We have total. 33. So let's do 15. We got two more. I'll oh, minimize. That's why I break this up. This is minimize the torture here. I <laughs> get number 14. Then we'll go on to PHP because that's fun. Uh, number 14. <laughs> choose the SQL phrase that is equivalent to. Choose one. Where Sal is in, select Sal from M, where job is equal to manager. All right. So it's in. I wish it was not in. <laughs> if we just look at this kind of that piece here, what is it in doing? It's giving us a set. So where Sal is in, select Sal from M. Job is equal to manager. Well, okay, so this one is not in. It's the exact opposite of in. That's not going to be the same. Uh, B's got some promising to it. It says equals any. Uh, that would be in. So B's looking good. Yeah, 
mark be right now? Uh, greater than or equal to? Not the same as in. Less than or equal to? Not the same as in. All of the above? No, clearly all of the above are not the same. None of the above? No, nope, it's this one here. This is the one. The process of elimination is the one. In any or equal to in equal to any is the same as saying in. All right, last one for today, number fifteen. It's a long one. Uh, which query will return the job with the lowest average salary? Lowest lowest average salary. All right, so select job. Minimum average salary from employee group by job. Right, so minimum average. Select job salary from employee where salary is less than or equal to select the minimum average salary from employee job. So we're going to get the same thing as we got in the first query, but we're going to compare the employee salary to that. It may or may not necessarily give us the results we want. For the next one, select the job average salary. So hmm, that sounds pretty good. Where employee group by job having average salary equal to select minimum average salary. This is the correct one. It's number C. So you can put the aggregate together, there's nothing wrong with that. So like, for example, select job minimum average salary from them. That actually works, but it's not going to give you, it's not going to answer the query results. Where it says which query will return the job with the lowest, the job, one job, with the lowest average salary. Uh, so if you do a comparison, having average salary equal to select minimum average salary from an employee, this will give you the job group by job. You get the job with the lowest minimum salary, average salary. Okay. <laughs> Don't be concerned if this verse like super duper hard for you. Um, I have to remember I stopped on fifteen. I'll remember that. I'll save this actually. We'll continue this uh, next time. The, the final exam is much easier than this, much easier. Um, I know, in the afternoon. These are, t these are tongue twisters. You're not going to get anything this difficult on the exam. If you can do this, you could probably pass a, like a database industry test. So it's not bad to actually know the answers to these, but in the last 10 weeks, I seriously, for business database course, I don't know if you're actually going to be able to achieve that. So the exam that you're going to have is going to have simple queries on it. No tricks. These are all tricky. These are all trivia tricky questions. Not on the exam. None of these questions are on the exam, actually. Unless you want to finish them, you can finish them. They're a little dry. Ah, we'll do it this time. In the morning. So the next time when we meet, we have a morning session and we have an afternoon session. The exam is going to be given after after lunch. But you want to come in the morning, we're going to finish this. Unless you want to do this yourself. Um, we'll get the rest of the answers to this and then you can turn them in and get an A on it. Uh, and then in the afternoon, this is going to, it's not really a good review, but it's close enough. Um, it will hopefully get you back into thinking about databases. And then in the afternoon, we'll, we'll do the exam. So just to remind you what the exam is about, entity relationship diagramming. So remember assignment number one, assignment number two. I'm going to give you a, a description, something about customers or, or people buying stuff or banking, or some scenario. And then you're going to take that scenario and you're going to turn it into an entity relationship diagram. And then you're going to tell me where the keys are. Foreign keys, primary keys, and then you write your queries. But the queries that you're going to write, there's only one or two questions on them only. And it's going to be easier for you. No joins. No outer joins or no joins. No, none of the weird stuff we just looked at. Easy stuff. And then you'll have some miscellaneous multiple choice questions. 
that will be straightforward. All the details questions, but here in the programming menu concept course, we'll do very similar to that one. Uh, programming menu coding, um, multiple choice. Okay. Some of you guys are in that class. Okay, so I'm going to stop this recording.